Hi students! Welcome back to my channel. So today, we will be discussing week 4 module for grade 10 science, which is basically a continuation of week number 3. If you watched my previous video, it talks about the first three electromagnetic waves, namely radio waves, microwaves, and infrared. These are essentially called non-ionizing radiation. In that video lesson, we said that these non-ionizing radiation have lower frequency and energy. Therefore, overexposure would not cause any harm. This time, we will be dealing with the types which are far stronger but has a lot of applications in different fields. I entitled my slide Ionizing Radiation but I want to emphasize that not all of these four types are ionizing. We will talk more about them later. Still, for this week, the most essential learning competency would be to cite examples of practical applications of the different regions of electromagnetic waves such as the use of radio waves in telecommunications. So let's review the electromagnetic spectrum. We have shown this in the previous video for the non-ionizing radiation. This time, we will be discussing the remaining four EM waves which are visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. Among the four, visible light would have the longest wavelength and gamma rays would have the highest frequency. Also, in this diagram, we can see that the ionizing radiation towards the rightmost end of the electromagnetic spectrum is colored red. It encompasses a part of ultraviolet radiation, X-rays, and gamma rays. So this means that these types of electromagnetic waves have higher energy and therefore, if you are overexposed to these types of electromagnetic waves, it can cause harm to your health. Okay, so we said a while ago that these are examples of ionizing radiation. And these pictures show the different applications of each type of radiation or electromagnetic waves. Let's start with visible light. Visible light is the only type of electromagnetic wave visible to the human eye. Kaya nga siya tinawag na visible light. It can be divided into seven component colors which we know as Rojibiv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And we know that these are the colors of the rainbow. Among these seven colors, red has the longest wavelength while violet has the highest frequency. And if we will notice, Red color of the visible light spectrum is connected to infrared while the violet part of visible light is connected to ultraviolet. So that's somehow a hint for us to identify which color would have the longest wavelength and which color would have the highest frequency. Let's go now to the applications. Of course, this is the rainbow. I included this because as we all know, sabi nga kanina, visible light is the only type of electromagnetic wave that can be seen by the human eye or is naked to the human eye. So this means that visible light plays a very important role for us humans to be able to see everything that we can see around us. Without light, we can't see anything. Okay, so the rainbow is just a proof that white light or visible light can be separated into component colors because a rainbow is brought about by white light passing through a prism. So this time, the prism is water droplets. So the next application of visible light is fiber optics. I know that some of you may have fiber connections at home. So when we say fiber connections, these connections use 
fiber optics. Kaya mas mahal yung mga yan. Ngayon, ano ba yung fiber optics, ma'am? So, fiber optics is different from previous technology that we are using in the past years because in the past years, we are using copper cables. Okay? So, ano bang kaibahan ni copper cable kay fiber optics? Si fiber optics, kaya nga siya fiber optics, it uses light. Okay? So, kahit mas mahal si fiber optic cable kaysa sa kay copper cable, it has more advantages. So, since we know that electromagnetic waves can travel at a speed of 3 times 10 raised to 8 meters per second in vacuum, it means that it can transmit data way, way faster compared to copper cables which use electric current. Okay? Again, fiber optic cables use light so they can transmit data faster. Also, since fiber optic cables do not carry electric current, it is not prone to interruption. Meron kasi tayong mga tinatawag na interruption pag may dumaan na eroplano or may mga ibon na dumadaan dyan sa ibabaw ng mga wires natin, pwedeng magkaroon ng lag or magkaroon ng effect doon sa internet connection natin if we are using copper cables. Aside from that, pwede rin magkaroon ng electromagnetic interference. So, that interrupts data transmission. And then, they are also lighter and thinner. So, medyo yung copper cables kasi, tiba alam naman natin, yan ay minsan inanakaw dahil na ibebenta yan. Yun ay medyo mabibigat din kapag yun ay pinagsama-sama. So, fiber optic cables are lighter and thinner. And usually, itong mga to, nilalagay sa ilalim ng lupa, dun sila pinapadaan. So, those are just some of the advantages of fiber optic cables over the copper cables. So, again, fiber optic cables use visible light in order to transmit data. Also, another application would be endoscopy. So, dati, kapag gustong makita ng mga doktor yung kaloob-looban, for example, ng digestive system natin, for example, you are feeling something bad in your stomach, kailangan nilang buksan yung stomach natin para makita yung nasa loob. But then, nung nagkaroon tayo ng endoscopy, nakikita natin dyan sa screen yung picture na ginagawa nila, you have a tube and then there's light in it. Yan ay pinapasok lang sa katawan ng tao. And then, they can see what is inside our body. So, this is an example of what can be seen using endoscopy. So, I think this is the intestine. So, yan. If you want a closer look of that, way, way before, kailangan buksan yung katawan natin. Pero, thanks to endoscopy, although medyo masakit daw yan, sabi nila, mas onti na yung pagka-invasive nung procedure na gagamitin. Okay, so, Next, after visible light, we have ultraviolet. Ultraviolet rays have shorter wavelengths but higher frequency than visible light. Ultra means beyond. So, ultraviolet means beyond violet. They have three kinds, UVA, UVB, and UVC. Now, how do we differentiate the three? Lahat ng mga yan, uh, nanggagaling sa sun. However, not all these three can reach the surface of the earth. Most of the solar UV or ultra solar ultraviolet that would reach the earth's surface is UVA. Why? Because UVB and UVC uh, would most definitely be absorbed or filtered by the atmosphere. However, makikita natin sa diagram that UVA is the type of ultraviolet that can penetrate up to the inner layers of the skin. So, yan din yung type ng ultraviolet radiation na usually nagkukos ng pag-itim natin pag tayo ay nagbababad sa araw. Ngayon, si UVB, yan yung almost 5% na natitira kasi sabi nga atin kanina, tiba, 95% would be UVA. The remaining 5% usually would be UVB. So, ito, hanggang skin surface lang siya. However, since UVB has higher energy and frequency than UVA, it may cause 
skin cancer if you are over exposed. So, si UVC hindi na nakakarating sa atin yan. So, ang pinaka need natin ng protection ay against UVA and UVB. Because of course, when there is sunlight, you can filter which is UVA and which is UVB. That's why when you go to the beaches, you need to put some SPF, di ba yung lotion na mas mataas yung SPF, mas maganda. Another application of ultraviolet rays is the black light. So, itong mga to, usually nakikita natin kapag may mga play. So, ginagamit yan, yung shadow plays. And then, sterilization of medical equipment. O, itong yung ultraviolet na to, parang naging mas uso siya ngayon. Nakikita ko siya sa mga malls. So, yung mga escalator, usually, nilalagyan sila ng ultraviolet. Yung handlebars sa gilid para sabi daw, mamatay daw ang mga germs. So, ultraviolet is an effective way to kill germs and viruses. And also, ito yung pinaka-common sa lahat na application ni ultraviolet, yung pag-check ng authenticity ng documents, specifically visas and money. Siguro nakakita na kayo ng ganito sa mga tindahan kapag kayo ay nagbabayad ng larger bills, 1,000 pesos, 500 pesos. Chinecheck nila yung mga marks ng money gamit ang ultraviolet because there are some features of bills na hindi natin makikita ng walang ultraviolet light. Okay, so next, let's have x-rays. X-rays are very familiar to us. Okay, they have shorter wavelength than UV rays but of course they have higher frequency and they are mostly used for medical imaging and security purposes so pag merong nabalian or kapag gusto mo lang makita yung for example annual checkup, kailangan na x-ray makikita dyan yung ating bones pero very limited ang kanyang imaging kasi it can only see the bones but not the internal organs All right. Also for security purposes, since pag nasa airport merong mga bagay na hindi pwedeng dalhin. So halimbawa, yan ay nauso dati yung tanim bala. So kapag may mga bullets diyan sa inyong maleta, makikita agad yan ng x-ray. Even yung mga bawal na bagay like mga drugs or food kung bawal man. So nakikita lahat yan ng security sa airport. Finally, so we have the last type of electromagnetic wave. We call that gamma rays. Gamma rays have the shortest wavelengths but the highest frequency and energy. Since they have the highest frequency and energy, this types of radiation or this type of radiation, if you are overexposed to it, it can cause serious illnesses. May mga prescribed lang tayo na amount ng radiation na pwede mo matanggap for this type of radiation. However, uh, don't be afraid, okay? Because gamma rays have a lot of good applications in the industries and in the medical field. And these people who use this type of radiation, they know what to do. They know what amount of radiation your body can take. Here It is said that it can be used for medical imaging and cancer treatment. So, for example, uh, it is used in a PET scan. PET stands for positron emission tomography. For example, they want to get the image of the brain. An X-ray cannot get a clear image of it. So, you need gamma rays. Since mas okay yung penetration ng gamma rays, mas clear yung nakikita na image sa kanya. It is also used for cancer treatment dito. So, we call that process radiotherapy. Ang ginagawa doon, tinatarget yung tumor ng gamma rays para mapatay sila. But then, um, you need a medical physicist there in order for the doctors to be able to target the correct part of your body. Because the goal there is to direct the gamma rays to the area so the part of the body with the tumor but not affecting the surrounding parts which has healthy cells kapag kasi yung healthy cells natamaan din ng gamma rays may possibility na magdevelop din siya ng cancer 
Next application of gamma rays is what we call irradiation. So irradiation can help extend the shelf life of food. O alam naman natin na ang pagkain nasisira na papanis once na magkaroon niya ng germs. So irradiation using gamma rays kills harmful bacteria, therefore making your food safer and have a longer shelf life. We also have a field in astronomy which we call gamma astronomy. So, they use gamma rays in order to identify the different elements that are present in a planet or in a celestial body. So, that's all for today. I hope I have helped you understand more about the remaining types of electromagnetic waves. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to place them on the comment box below. And if you haven't subscribed to my page, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye!